I'm absolutely faded right now, so we're going to try to get through this. I've literally recorded this video three times because I'm pretty sure halfway through I just start repeating myself because I forgot what I said. That is the state of my mindset that my favorite football team has put me in on a Monday night, the week of Christmas, as the Eagles fall 20-17 to with a blowing a fourth quarter lead <laughs> to Drew Locke and the Seattle Seahawks. The Eagles suck. This team is not good. Um... And I'm not, I'm not going to discredit it. The easiest thing to say is this team's not good, hasn't been all good all year. Of this 10-4, and four, we have nice wins. We have impressive wins. The win over Miami, impressive. The win over the Chiefs, impressive. The win over Buffalo, incredibly impressive. But even in all those games and all this 10-4, and four, we have not looked remotely similar to the Philadelphia Eagles of last year. And we had to be better than the Philadelphia Eagles of last year to go on and win the Super Bowl because last year's team wasn't good enough. And we are so far off the mark. Last year's Eagles team would beat this year's Eagles team 45-3. to it would, it would be right in line with our losses to the 49ers and Cowboys. Um, for this game, you know, big picture, defensively played better. The defense played good, I thought, for three and a half quarters. Outside of a couple big-time runs by Kenny Walker, would maybe you'd like to see the Eagles make a play. I chalk it up to just Kenneth Walker's a really good running back. I made a couple plays. We held DK Metcalf in check for three and a half quarters. JSN, all these weapons. Yeah, they got Drew Locke throwing the ball, but let's be honest. There's not a gigantic gap between Geno Smith and Drew Locke. There is a decent one. Geno Smith didn't write back, playing well. But it's not a giant. Like Drew Locke, we saw last week against the 49ers, can operate the offense. And... We shot these guys down, it was, and we had no slay. Our secondary is not particularly good, so it was impressive, the feat that they did for three and a half. Obviously, the last drive, getting dunked on Bradbury, like, what a bad... I, I'm very glad that I was very public in the whole, we essentially paid James Bradbury instead of CJ, GJ. I was always in the camp of, pay Chauncey Gardner Johnson, maybe a little bit of Gator bias on that one, but I always kind of felt that like, with how it ended with Bradbury, I did not see this type of regression, but I was just like... Given the fact that you had to pick between two players, I think Chauncey Gardner Johnson's versatility, give me that, and the fact that Bradbury's final play in the Super Bowl, it's like that's usually one of those, like, it's probably best to move on. It's very tough to come back from that type of play uh, in that kind of position in the Super Bowl. But we went Bradbury, and man, oh man, burnt toast. Um, I don't know, man. It's going to be, we got to, we, I'm not anti Darius Slay. I, I am worried about Slay. He's not playing as elite as he once was, but I, I'm still. Pro Darius Slay being on this team, but Bradbury, we got to get that contract off the books, man. Butt cheeks. Uh, unless you think that, I mean, he's, he was a safety in college. Is, is that one of those deals where, like, you, you move him to safety? That, that could help? I don't know. But that is not particularly good. But overall, this game wasn't lost by the defense. I thought the defense did good. We had, obviously, that huge changeup by essentially firing Sean Desai, hiring Matt Patricia as a DC. And that big change made a difference this defense played pretty damn good obviously the last play sucks i think that was probably more so on personnel but definitely a noticeable difference from the defensive standpoint offensively you got a question like do we need to do something similar is that the kind of change up that needs to happen and i i don't feel as certain offensively as i did on the defense side of the ball so clearly sean decided was out of his depth is what it is man it's first year dc you're not going to hit on all these first time coaches i think offensively it's very easy to throw Nick Sirianni and Brian Johnson under the bus. I'm not excluding that. I'm not smart enough to analyze the game to say this is 100% a play-calling issue versus this is 100% a Jalen Hurts issue. I'm, I'm not even smart enough to decipher like if you had a percentage that because clearly it's an issue between both. But what I am considering and at least suggesting as a potential thought here is, is the play-calling okay to solid? And it's Jalen Hurts not making the right calls. Like, is that truly the issue? Because obviously it's going to optic look like, man, well, these play calls are butt cheeks. And they haven't been particularly good. I thought the first drive for the Eagles was outstanding. It looked like Shane Steich and Nick Sirianni offensive drive from last year. Runs, commitment to the run, even if some runs weren't working. We didn't immediately bail on it. Quick throws, some design, had some motion. It looked great. It looked great. And then from there on out, we started slowly reverting. Like the the running attempts, DeAndre Swift out for Kenneth Gainwell coming in. Like, what is that? Honest, I like Kenny G. But he's not he's he's not the hot hand right now. He is not the hot hand. 
And I don't think for how like the drives were going, DeAndre Swift with gas is as the reason why he was on the sideline. And I get it, Kenny G's better pass protector, but like these were early downs. Get it, if you want him third down, need him to chop block, whatever, cut, just get in there, get it. But Swift needs to be out there more. And it felt like a lot less DeAndre Swift after the first couple drives. It felt like a lot more Jalen Hurts bailing out of the pocket, taking forever, looking for the deep shot play. And it's it doesn't look good. And, and it's one of those things where it's like you got it's like it's so bad and it's been such an issue for so long. Is it the play callers not making adjustments and adapting their offense? Or is it Jalen Hurts not operating the offense efficiently and effectively? I don't know. I'm starting the more that this team continues to struggle, I'm more inclined to put more of that slowly on Jalen Hurts. Like I think it's still fair enough without being a Jalen Hurts hater or Jalen Hurts defender, that, like, it's, it, I, I think it's fair not to say it's 50-50 right now. 50% the play calling is not good enough. 50% Jalen Hurts is not good enough. But for every week, especially with the games coming up, two against the Giants, one against the Cardinals, which we have to look at ourselves in the mirror right now as Eagles fans, and as far as our expectations, those games are going to be sweaty. Those games are going to be grindy, which is a damn shame because there's, there's no way this team with this much talent should have that idea and that mentality for these three games. We should be beating the brakes off these teams like the 49ers and Cowboys do against bad teams. That is not the case. And it's it's brutal. It's absolutely brutal. Um, so looking at the, the grades here, Jalen Hurts, 17-31, 143 yards, two picks, had two rushing touchdowns. You know, as a runner, one of his best games all year, had the tush push, both picks. I think you still. Have, I think you have to put them on Jalen Hurts. First pick was an underthrown ball to Quez Watkins. Was there a penalty? Yeah, there was. A, there was two really backbreaking penalties going against the Eagles in this game. One was on that Quez no call. One they just called like a phantom penalty on Jason Kelsey on a converted tush push, which was I think in the red zone, close to the red zone. Call that penalty. Ball goes back. We have to settle for a field goal. Four point swing right there on a phantom call. So I think between the you know the bad calls this week and the bad calls last week, the pick like three picked up flags in favor of the Dallas Cowboys last week against the Cowboys. I think we are fully paid up in football ref karma from the Dolphins and Bills games, where clearly the calls are going in favor of the Philadelphia Eagles. We have now paid that back with our Cowboys game and the Seahawks game. So we're now back in the middle. So hopefully over the last three weeks and into the playoffs, it's balanced. You know, we've, we've paid our dues. But between that one, still an underthrow, and then you have the hero ball to A.J. Brown. When this team's marching down, get field goal range for one of the best kickers. Top three kicker in the NFL right now, for sure. I think you go some order of, like, Tucker, the Cowboys kicker that hasn't missed yet, and Jake Elliott. Like, those are the three. Those guys are going to be going to the all-pro. You give him a shot. You don't take a shitty underthrown, I guess you're trying to draw a P.I.-type throw to A.J. Brown to lose the game. It was a hell of a play by Julian Love to make the pick. Got to give him credit there. But that ball shouldn't have gone there. And it's... The, I don't like. I put this context of people saying Jalen Hurts has a noodle arm. I've said it, but like, let's be to make it simplified. He's like an eighty-seven, maybe eighty-eight throw power quarterback in Madden. He, he can zip it, but he's not this guy that should be throwing it like he's fucking Josh Allen. Okay, we don't have a cannon here. These underthrown balls are costing this team. This this mentality that Jalen Hurts has to make the big play is costing this team. I don't know one hundred percent that's play design. But I'm starting to think this is just Jalen Hurts making the wrong reads. Not a good game from our quarterback. I, you know, I'm gonna give him a D plus because it was supposed to be his flu game. Obviously, the health of Jalen Hurts wasn't ideal for this matchup. But I mean, the way that he was playing, he looked like I don't. I don't think his his ailment had anything to do with the bad plays that happened tonight. I'll say that. So D plus for Jalen Hurts. He's, he's not playing good enough. Point blank period. He, he's, he's not the only reason why we're losing these games. But he's now getting paid franchise quarterback money. And he's not playing good enough. Uh, DeAndre Swift, 74 yards. Had a couple big runs. Still feel like we're not utilizing him enough. Uh, definitely take some of these Jalen Hurts carries away. Give him to DeAndre Swift. And even though Kenny Gainwell is the better pass protector. Like they're using him on a lot of like early downs. I like Kenny G. And it, but it just didn't feel like when he was coming in for Swift, that was because Swift was tired. It feels like they're still trying to get Kenny Gainwell touches. You just got to go with the hot hand. I, I Sorry. There might be a time when DeAndre Swift cools off and you want to sprinkle in some Kenny Gainwell. You're, hey, maybe activate Rashad Penny and give him a couple touches. 
But DeAndre Swift needs to be getting more. More. Absolutely more. Especially in a game the quarterback was poorly like shitting buckets for like three days. More. In a game that the goddamn wet weather. Philly has five straight outdoor games with shit weather that shouldn't be and usually isn't conducive to throwing the football. Yet we're throwing the football and not like he needs to have 30 carries. <laughs> you know, like some of these crazy Saquon Barkley stat lines from Giants games. We need to feed that to DeAndre Swift in this running attack. Um, I didn't think they had a bad game. I, I'd say running backs get a B minus. Um, receivers, you know, Quez needs to, uh, just that was a soft fighting for the ball type play. Um, I mean, Goddard looked okay, had a couple under throws, I, nothing bad. I, you know, it wasn't like last week where there was the fumbles. So you could clearly say like these wide receivers didn't play well enough. I don't think there was a lot of plays, misplays, that A.J. Brown or Devontae Smith could have made. It was really just the Quez underthrown deep ball. You'd like to see him make something ridiculous happen there. Um, you know, C for the receivers, I, I guess, if you had to throw that in. And the defense. I mean, this was the all eyes on the Philadelphia Eagles defense. Matt Patricia now essentially our defensive coordinator. Saw some good. I, again, Philadelphia's defense I thought was pretty good for three quarters of this game. Maybe more than three quarters. Uh, Josh Sweat had a good sack. Fletcher Cox played well. Jordan Davis was solid. Son Riddick was solid. Nolan Smith made a couple plays. I assume, without looking at the All-22, Keely Ringo did a great job. Uh, all reports that he was going up against DK Metcalf. DK did nothing for most of the game. That is outstanding. Um, Kevin Byard was solid. I thought Sidney Brown had your classic up-and-down rookie performance. Some good plays, some not-so-good plays. But there's promise there. Reed Blanks, it was solid. Honestly, Nicholas Morrow made a couple plays. And I'm not going to say necessarily shut people up. There's a reason why, you know, he's where he is. He's, he's one of those guys that's going to make some play some week and be a liability others. And that's just like your your depth rotational can, you know, think of like a Chris Maragos from back in the day. Like sometimes he actually might be pretty solid, might make a couple plays. And other times teams are going to target him. And that's just kind of the, you know, the volatile, the volatility of a, of a, like a fringe depth roster piece that gets played as much as Nicholas Moore. I, I thought Shaq Leonard was pretty bad. Uh, there was a play that Sidney Brown made a play behind the line of scrimmage, kind of assuming that Shaq was going to kind of clean it up, just whiffed on it. There's another play where he met Kenny uh, Kenny Walker in the hole. It's like, boo! Like, I assume that's how he thought it was going to stop him because he literally just, you know, bounced around and it got out there. So I haven't been impressed by him one bit. And obviously Bradbury's burnt toast. Um, so the way put it, it's going to be bad. Slay's probably not going to be back till what? He's probably not going to be back to the playoffs because there's no way they're going to rush him back for a, a MetLife turf game, right? I don't know. I, I I I still don't even with that scenario. Yes, we know Bradbury is slow, and you're putting up against uh, you know a quick wide receiver, but it's it twenty. You you got to score more than twenty. I think even holding Seattle to twenty with the weapons they have is not bad. Not a bad defensive performance. We saw what they did to Dallas a week ago. But your offense has to score more than seventy. The offense had more than enough opportunity to score more than fucking seventeen points against the Seahawks, and they didn't. That is my takeaway. Whatever big changes we just saw on the defensive side of the ball, it seemingly worked. We had a better performance. It looked different for the most part. The offense needs to do something similar. I don't know what that is because I don't know if it is a Jalen Hurts problem or a coaching problem, but something needs to change because this offense looks like shit compared to last year. Last year's team would dog walk this year's Eagles team. And the, you say that, and I say that with utter confidence. And then you look at the roster, and the roster's still 90 fucking percent the same. You got a problem. And that all eyes on the coaching, I assume. I don't know. What do you guys think? Is it hurts? Is it coaching? Let me know in the comment section below. See you on the next one. God damn it, man.